you clowns? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. I go by MK Fit. Um, this has been a video that I've been wanting to do, well, pretty much ever since I got a YouTube channel. Yes, I dyed my hair, by the way. So this is something that I feel is not talked about enough. You know, we all want to get fit. We all want to start using the gym, but nobody really actually teaches us how to use a gym, at least nobody taught me. I will never forget the first time I walked into a gym and just feeling so intimidated and not being able to set up a leg press machine and freaking out because I thought everyone was staring at me. I'm basically running out saying, I'm never doing that again. I'd like to save you that time and that anxiety and I'm going to take you with me into the gym today and I'm going to teach you kind of the basics of how to set up equipment. Obviously I know every gym is different but at least I'll be able to show you different kinds of equipment, things to look for, etc. Um, <laughs> I'm just packing up my gym bag. Um, if anyone is on the hunt for a really, really good protein bar, I'm just gonna stuff this in my face before we head out. I've been really enjoying the Built Protein Bars. They're pretty much the only protein bar that I've tried that doesn't taste like sandpaper or cement. Um, you know when you have a protein bar and like the first bite is okay and then you get halfway through it, you're like, ooh. Um, I can actually get through one of these. I really like the cookie dough flavor. So this one has 15 grams of protein and it's only 150 calories, um, which is pretty dang good. Plus it's cookie dough flavor, like who wouldn't? So, um, stuff this in my face. Let's go to the gym. Well, hello. Okay, well, I'm in the parking lot of the gym, willing myself to go in. But a couple things before we enter such a noisy space. There are five main sections that we're gonna focus on um, for this video. And hopefully if your gym is nice, they separate into such sections and it's not just things everywhere. So we've got cardio section. And again, hopefully they put all of the cardio equipment together. We've got free weights. We've got machines, we've got cables, and then we have the squat rack. So those are the five areas that we are gonna focus on today. And like I said, hopefully your gym is kind of similar where they put all the similar equipment in one area, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so bear with me. I wanna do my absolute best to explain everything to you guys. So, oh, let me rev myself up here and then let's, let's go to the gym. You guys ready? Let's go! We got cardio, cardio, machines, Three weights over there, and the cables right in the middle. We're gonna start with some cardio. Okay, I'm starting on a treadmill just to start. There are basically two things you look for when you're setting up any kind of cardio machine. One is usually the speed, and the other is usually a resistance of some kind. So um, for something like a treadmill, obviously speed is going to be one of them. And then um, there's also another button to adjust the incline. So if you want to run up a hill, um, that's what usually those two buttons mean. The things you want to look for, some kind of green button that says start, and then you're looking for a set of arrows. So mine happen to be arrows here, so you can see that speed. And then you can see here that's incline like i said i know every gym is different but those are the basically the buttons that you want to look for is some kind of quick start button and then the two arrows that can adjust your speed resistance incline whatever so if you're actually someone that's worried about falling off the treadmill by the way no worries i've been there i've done it i have fallen off a treadmill and i have done it in front of everyone um <laughs> a tool that you can use they usually have these on most treadmills so obviously you got that lovely big red stop button here, but when it's attached to, actually, you see this little thing here? So if I were to unwind that, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to clip it, start. So then it shows you everything here, at least this machine does. There's your speed. Um, so this one's actually in kilometers per hour. Most of them are usually in miles. That's going to be your incline here. So let's put up a percentage. Get going up there. It's a pretty... The 7%, that's pretty... That's like almost right in the middle. I've seen treadmills go up to 12. I've seen them go up to 15% incline. I've seen them go even higher. So it depends on what you got. But I personally have never gone higher than a 12 because... Ouch. And this treadmill obviously starts rising up and then we got more of a hill going there. 
Okay, so what happens if you're running on a treadmill and you're losing control and you fall off, boom. I just tugged on it slightly and the machine stopped. So if you're someone that's really, really nervous about falling off, which again, I've done, you want to clip that thing on. The minute that you pull on that, that rope, it will stop automatically. Okay, so you see we got a nice big green button that says go. That's the only one I want you worrying about. A lot of these cardio equipments, they do have kind of like preset workouts for you. They're just extra buttons. I wouldn't worry about them too much unless it's something you want to look into, but um, those are the only ones that I focus on. So you can see on here that the Stairmaster, there's really no other, there's really nothing other than speed. It's just basically how fast or slow you want to walk up some stairs. So very similar. We look for our set of arrows, so there she is. Something like a, an elliptical or a bike, for example, the speed you're actually in control, so it depends on how fast you're actually moving the machine, but then the thing that you're gonna adjust is resistance. So on elliptical, it's about how um, heavy the, the machine is to actually work, and same thing on a rowing machine is another good one, and a spin bike as well. Okay. I just actually finished my warm-up. I just actually did a, an incline walk on the treadmill. I was so inspired. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to a couple machines. My gym is actually nice because they have um, a couple of different brands uh, of machinery that I can show you. So you can kind of see a bit of a, a, a difference in how you know a leg press in my gym may look different uh, in your gym. Okay, so let's head on over there and let's get this going. Also, I'm really sorry, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of obnoxious people today. So I apologize for the noise. So, um, I'm at a seated leg press. So a couple of things uh, when you're using machine. Machines are actually um, better for beginners than say like dumbbells and free weights because machines essentially like do your form for you. So if you're someone that really, really struggles with, oh, I don't know if I'm doing this right, um, I highly recommend you start with machines first because they kind of show you like, oh, this is kind of what I'm supposed to be feeling and this is how my posture should be. So something like a leg press, if your gym is nice and they've bought an equipment that is very user friendly, most of the adjustment pieces, they will be in a bright color. See, there's a bright color there, so we can know we can adjust that. So you can add zero, five, or ten pounds. Okay, you see another bright color down there. That's to adjust the weight via key boost system. Now we've got this C, but we all know that my legs will not be able to reach that. So we see there's another bright color there. And just lift that up, and then you can slide the C up or down, and we just know that I'm gonna put it as close as possible, release the attachment, it should lock, and then look, my little legs are ready to go. So again, you're always looking for that brightly colored knob. I'm going to get myself in here. Oh yeah, nice and snug. <laughs> so, um, most machines use a keyhole system in order to adjust your weight, so I'll show you here. So let's go down. Apologize for my angle. Okay, now, if you have any kind of tension on the machine at all, the weight is not going to move, it's not going to adjust. So you gotta make sure that there's no tension, the machine is fully relaxed, I should say, and then you can adjust your weight. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the keyhole out, and I'm gonna set it, let's try one, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good, 145, and then if I wanted to add an extra five pounds and make it 150, then we can. A lot of machines will show you exactly what muscles you're using as well. And then there's a little guide there to show. But honestly, in my opinion, those pictures don't do shite. I don't like to look at them and I just get confused. So hopefully that helps a bit. So I'm seated. And if you were struggling in terms of like, oh, that's too close, you could just lift up on that attachment and slide in the seat up or down. So there's a nice circle in the middle to show where center is. Uh, ouch. And then when you're using a machine, try to make sure that you're not just <laughs> slamming down the weight in between. We want to keep under constant tension, so go as low as you can or as far as you can without the weight completely dropping. And you can even watch it here. As I use the leg press, this is what happens. We are literally 
lifting those weights up and down, okay? I'm gonna finish this set and then I'm gonna go over to a different kind of machine and I'll show you kind of like a similar system in terms of what you're looking for. Okay, so here's another one. This is leg extension. So this is a leg extension machine, but This is also a leg extension machine, so it does the exact same thing, but it's probably set up completely different, so let's set it up. So again, we're looking for those brightly colored knobs. You see one here, so that means we can adjust the seat. You can see it's on tracks. There's how to adjust the weight again. It's very similar keyhole system. And then we've also got this cool looking thing right here. What does it do? Step number one is just to find those adjustment pieces. And if they're not brightly colored, look for some kind of knob. I know you can make thousands of dirty jokes there, go for it some kind of knob to adjust things. So I see a brightly colored knob. Okay, what does it do? Okay, so you can see that you can adjust the placement of this part right here. And then you wanna always make sure that it's locked in place. So have a look at the picture and you can see where your feet are supposed to go. Already I know that my legs are gonna be too short for this, so. See, even I'm struggling. Ugh, maybe I have to sit down. Okay, I was right. It was just really, really, really hard to do. So hopefully you can see me. I was like tugging and I was like, what? Am I doing this wrong? See, it happens to the best of us, but literally I have to use two hands. Ugh, there we go. And then you can slide it. Oh, that's really difficult. It's just mean, honestly. But there we go. Okay, let's, let's get in this thing. Feels pretty solid to me. Let's up our weight. I'm just picking a random one. See how it goes. That's hard. Okay, let's go down. Rule of thumb, by the way, when you're picking weights, your last two reps, if you're doing a set of eight, 10, 12, whatever, your last two reps should be a struggle to get through. That's always a good indicator of like, oh, am I picking the right weight for me? For instance, that one, I struggled with just doing the first rep, so I knew I wasn't gonna last 10 or 12. So let's try 30 pounds. Oh yes, oh, your quads are sore. And there she is. And then you just get to sit back in the machine to get it adjust your form for you, your core is engaged. And just get to chill. So again, machines are great for beginners. I'm just casually working out at the same time. <laughs> machines are great for beginners because it does that form for you, but you don't want to get too used to them because eventually you want to move over into free weights where you got to do your form yourself. Make sure things like your core is engaged, you know, your spine is neutral. We got good posture of those things, but you know, machines are a good stepping block to work towards that. So there we go. Um, let's move on. Let's try a different machine. Okay, so you can see here these machines are completely different because we're using plates instead of the keyhole system. So these are pretty new, these like basically these hip thrusters machines, but I'm gonna set one up and show you. So in this case here, you actually have to go and find plates. So I'm going to set up right here, see how much they are. Right, right on the plate itself. And then I've gone ahead and slid one plate each side here you don't need any clips on the ends okay the machine will keep it in place for you and that's it let's strap ourselves in so you can see kind of how it works we have a little picture set up here but again we're looking for those bright colors so in this case it would just be the seat adjustment here see that little knob and then you can literally just pull up slide the seat as far or close as you want and again always make sure that it's locked in place this will be our seat belt here so uh, we've got this too you can rise the seat up oh look at that i actually didn't know that So 
that's we're gonna stop with machines for now please if you guys have questions please let me know but I hope you get the idea of it it's important that you know that um, it's not up to you to try to morph yourself to fit into a machine a machine is always adjustable for your body play around with it see what moves see what doesn't and uh, and don't be afraid to ask for help either um, okay so we're gonna move on we're gonna do some cables um, Cables are probably one of the most intimidating uh, machines for people because there's so many different attachments. So let's go look. All these. All these. All these. Like, what is that? Don't panic. I'm not going to show you every single attachment, but what I am going to do is kind of give you a sense of like how one attachment can do different things depending on what. Um, exercise you're doing and also what kind of attachment works best for you and your body. So just for an example, I'm going to show you guys a tricep extension and I'm going to use two completely different attachments and you can kind of see the difference between both, okay? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with this cool looking rope thing here so you can see how it attaches. It's a keyhole right here, you would just slide the attachment on and then she's ready to go. Again, we've got another brightly colored knob here. So you can see, way too high for me. Okay. So it's supposed to pull out. And why isn't it pulling out? And I'm actually gonna show you. So sometimes when a machine, or when a cable already has an attachment on it, this thing, remember when I said about you can't adjust the machine if there's any tension on it? This rope, this attachment has weight to it. It's actually pulling on the machine and it's pulling on the weight so I can't adjust it. So what I do, if this happens to you, so what I actually do is I'll lift this up just to get rid of that tension, pull it out. same thing with a different attachment. Okay. So this is a short T-bar and I want you to notice the difference between, it's the same exercise, but notice the difference in my, in my form, my range of motion, okay? different attachments you can see with the ropes I was able to kind of go out more hitting a kind of a different area with my triceps whereas the short t-bar I could only go straight down both are good and honestly the more variation you have the better but it's honestly just about what you prefer what's comfortable one is not better than the other you just need to work for you and your body and it's the same thing with adjusting the weight it's a keyhole system no bright colors here you just gotta pull it out and push it in, okay? If this ever happens where you're trying to adjust the weight and it won't go in, it's stuck, again, that means that there's tension on the cable. So lift up the attachment or get rid of it completely and then you can adjust your weight. Some cables too also have these things. Look, another bright colored knob, okay? This adds extra weight. So you can see that this goes up by five pounds, but what if you wanna add less than five pounds? That's what these things are. Okay, I think those are two and a half. So I encourage you just to play around with different attachments. Uh, I've seen people do some crazy things with attachments and I thought, wow, I would never use that for that exercise, but that's really cool. Don't be afraid to experiment with them and uh, and have fun. It's like a massive jungle gym. Like, oh my God, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We're gonna go over to free weights. Okay, welcome to the free weight section where I'm doing a voiceover because literally all the people in this section were really, really annoying and loud and judgy wudgy. So here we go. So basically all you need to know about the free weight section is how to set up a bench. So you can see once again, brightly colored knobs. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust the seat. So you can usually adjust the base of your seat and then also the part where you rest your back on. Don't mind me, there's a lot of bros watching me right now. 
You got this, MK Fit. Okay, so same thing, just like you're doing the machines. You find those brightly colored knobs. You're just going to pull it out. Let's see how much I struggle here. I'm struggling a lot, apparently. I'm having bad luck that day. Just everything was so rusty. But yeah, don't be afraid to really, really pull on it. Ah, uh, see, that one I got. So you can change the incline um, off the back of the seat there. Okay, you got this one, M. Pull. Yeah! And then you can see you can adjust the seat um, if you want an incline or not. And that's basically it for the free weight section, guys. Just as long as you know how to adjust your bench, grab a pair of dumbbells, and uh, get to work. Yeah, you did it. Okay, so important for you to know the diff biggest difference between a Smith machine and a squat rack is that a Smith machine, the bar is attached to the machine, so it just slides up and down, whereas a squat rack, you can take the bar off and move it freely. So I'm going to show you how to quickly set up a Smith machine, and then we'll go upstairs and move to the squat racks, okay? Honestly, if I knew how loud this gym was going to be, I probably would have done voiceovers the entire time, but here we are, we're back. So you can see that that, that bar is attached to the machine. You have to lift it up, rotate it towards you to be able to slide it up and down. If you let it rotate back, it's going to catch on those hooks there. So you can see you can do all kinds of things, shoulder presses, squats, whatever you want to do. So I think I'm going to go set it up. Yes, slide a plate and you slide it right on. With a Smith machine, they usually don't come with clips. The bar is a little skinnier than it is on a squat rack and it's a lot lighter. And also the machine, the barbell is attached to the machine. So you don't really have to worry about plates sliding on and off. So just make sure when you're using it that the bar is always rotated towards the back. If it rotates towards the front, it will catch on those hooks. Here, just show you a close up of what the hooks look like. So um, you'll see that you just lift it up, rotate it back, and then that's how the bar slides up and down. And then to stop, again, you just rotate it towards the front and let it catch on the hooks. If you are terrified that the bar is going to, you know, come away from you and drop on your body, they've got these lovely little stoppers here at the bottom, so you just twist it to rotate it, set it on the desired hook that you want to make sure it doesn't crush you, and then you've got that extra bit of safety there. So you can see what happens if you just let it go, it'll stop on that stopper, and then we feel safer. Smith machines are just great. They're basically like the machine to free weights. It's kind of like a, a good baby step or a good beginner step if you want to work towards squat racks, but you're a little worried about, you know, setting up a barbell for the first time and lifting it and hoping it doesn't crush you. The Smith machine is a, a lot safer and um, a lot more beginner friendly and it'll help get you used to, you know, carrying a barbell as well. It's empty. I'm so freaking happy right now. Okay, let's do this. Okay, probably one of the most intimidating things to learn how to use and to set up because obviously um, if you don't use it properly, your chance for injuries are a lot greater than say using free weights or machines. But I'm going to show you best as I can how to set up uh, a squat rack. Like I said, I know every squat rack is different, but at least hopefully it'll give you a general sense of what to look for. I know the lighting's really bad. There we go. Like I said earlier, so the Smith machine is a attached, so the bar is attached to the machine. This bar can come right off and you can do, um, well, a lot more things. So Smith machines are great to start out with if you're a beginner. Um, I started there and then slowly worked up my way to the squat rack. So. One of the biggest things to note that the bar on a squat rack versus a Smith machine, the bar is a lot heavier. The bar is usually between 35, 45 pounds is around standard. So that's important to take note of when you're adjusting your weights because your weights will probably be lighter than say what you would put on the Smith machine. Okay, so really important when you're setting up a squat rack, especially for the first time, take everything off. So the bar I've just put on the lower stand here and all the plates are off on the side, the clips are off, so we just have these little guys here. So in order to adjust these things, you see it's all numbered here, okay? Or you see the little keyholes, okay? That's how we're going to adjust the height of our bar, okay? So I'm gonna try to set this up so you guys can see me. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna set this thing up. So this comes off completely and it took me forever to learn how to slide this off. This doesn't slide out tomorrow. This particular one, you have to lift up 
and then out. Now, like I said, every squat rack may be different, but just know most of the time they're not just going to slide right out. Fiddle around with it, play with it, okay? And then you can see on the inside here, this is where the keyholes kind of line up, okay? So you line up those knobs with the holes on the edge of the pole here. Slide in, lower down. Okay? And then make sure, like I said, all the numbers they have to match up. Let's see, mine is on seven here. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side here. Come out, and you can see, line them up. Lower down, okay? Next, we're gonna choose some plates. Okay, so I'll just start with a 10 for now so I can lift it with one hand and film at the same time. Okay, and we're gonna slide it right onto the bar. Make sure it's all the way in. And obviously, I know it sounds redundant, but please make sure that the weight is even on both sides. Okay, so there's an example of what those clips are gonna look like. Um, you may also see, I'll put a picture of it here that uh, some clips look like this. They do the same thing, they're just different. The silver ones there that I've shown you the picture of, you have to squeeze it, almost like a like one of those hand weights, squeeze and then slide it on. This, uh, These ones here are an actual clip, so I'll show you how to put these ones on. Okay, so let's take our clip. Okay. I'm doing this one-handed, don't mind me. <laughs> slide it on, and then you're gonna take it and lock it, boom. And then we make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Now we're going to segue and do a voiceover because I can't talk that loudly in the gym, okay? But I'll do some squats for you. Hi again, so I actually messed up a bit here. I'm doing squats, so I should have adjusted my weight uh, with the barbell on the higher clips since that's where I'm going to be starting from. If you're doing deadlifts or hip thrusts, then definitely you want to put the bar down lower so it's easier to lift up into position. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to place the barbell because a lot of people do it incorrectly and end up doing it on their necks. Your neck is not supposed to lift up the barbell. It's supposed to be, you know, in your upper back in between your shoulder blades area. So let's watch me get into position here. So there's a difference between see the bar on my back versus the bar on my neck. That's a no, no. Put the bar. Yes, right in between your shoulders. It's going to hurt a lot less and be a lot more manageable. You can see that I'm starting in a squat position. So the bar is lower than, um, where I would normally start so that way I can lift it up safely and I don't have to go on my tiptoes and then that way I can just walk backwards and it'll be a lot easier to put down afterwards. Yeah, nice bomb Emily. Working it. <laughs> so you'll be able to see when I come back here if the clips were up any higher I would not be able to put that down safely. So I'm able to kind of squat down, lower it down and get her done. Yeah girl. Okay, so that is my very, very quick, <laughs> not professional uh, tutorial of how to use a gym. Um, I hope some of you found it sort of helpful. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And if anything you want to see uh, specifically, again, comment down below and I'll try to make it happen. You know what to do. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up subscribe because why not and uh, we're gonna do this guys we're gonna we're gonna combat gym anxiety I still get it and I know a lot of people do and this is something I'm really passionate about so any way that I can help please let me know all right love you guys bye